Not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I am better! This week is going to be a very very special video because I'm going to tell you why you should get a Tesla in 2023. So I watched a lot of Tesla review videos overseas right before I bought the car. When I buy it right, I realized right, it's actually very different driving a Tesla in Singapore. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the pros and cons of the car. I'm going to show you the features. I'm going to show you some of the things that you need to take note and some of the grants that you can apply to buy a electric vehicle. There's a couple of accessories and modifications that I did which I will put all the promo code and details in the description box so be sure to check them out. Okay, so let's Let's go! So the app right controls pretty much everything about the Tesla. There are quick controls that I can open the boot, open the front, control the aircon, play the music, horn or flash if I can't find the car. I can even start the car. I can open the window and close. Pretty much the app is uh, comprehensive all-in-one app where you can control your car remotely so even if I'm in overseas I actually can also for some reason start my car unlock my car for somebody to go in and take some things you are also able to check for tire pressure this one tells you the exact PSI that is inside your tire another quality of life feature that they have is of course the wireless charging simply put your phone in that spot and it charges that's it So uh, I'm approaching the highway and I'm going to show you auto driving which is my ultimate favorite feature of this car. For auto driving, I only recommend you to use it in the highway. You will see the interface to have a rainbow road and then now I'm driving free. My legs is free, my hands is free. Of course you shouldn't do that because they recommend you to hold the steering wheel but I'm just telling you it is pretty much auto driving like that. So it will slow down by itself, it will speed up by itself, you can adjust the speed and you can even adjust the following car distance if you find two car too close you can put like six car following distance so far my experience with auto driving has been flawless uh. it is really really good i rely on this a lot every single time i drive i will use auto drive right now i have the enhanced auto driving mode which means even lane changing can be done auto i can like signal there and then the car will just change the lane for me Basically, it will travel all the way until that I need to exit and then it will make a recommendation to change the lane. They will only change lane after you confirm. So if you don't want to change lane, you just ignore it. So that's auto driving. So another feature I want to talk about is of course the cameras. They have a crazy amount of cameras. You are able to see your blind spots behind. There's also an interior camera that will only be of use if you get into an accident. There's really not a need to have a traditional camera if you don't want to. Lah. There's one thing called sentry mode. When you park your car and you activate this sentry mode, anyone that goes near your car or do anything funny, right, they will record the whole footage and you can play back. They will also alert and certain notification to your phone so you know that uh, somebody is near your car doing something funny. There's also this map. I don't know, is this a map? Or what, what do you call it? Get a simulation <laughs> to show you what's around your surrounding. It can detect what type of car, is there a traffic road cone, is there a roadblock, is there people walking around, are they on bicycle, motorbike, everything they can detect. Uh, it's pretty cool because sometimes it will be able to detect further than you can actually see with your eyes and if i'm not wrong it's not affected by light at all so even if the place is dimly lit, you will be able to detect every now and then they will have a new patch and they will introduce new features or they will fix issues that were present before just these three months alone they have added like new games new feature they improve the auto driving and a lot of quality of life are uh, improvements which i really like back then when you signal this this thing come out and it cannot be shifted but now I can shift it to another place another thing I really really like about this car is the insanely fast pickup pickup in Singapore I think is especially important because in Singapore I don't know why the drivers behave this way if you don't signal 
and you cut into their lane, they will haunt you. And then if you try to go in and you signal, they will speed up. I have no idea why they behave this way, but for Tesla, it wouldn't be a problem because there's not much car that can beat you in that pickup speed. La. It's so sudden and it's so fast. It often won't present a problem when I try to go into a lane. Compared to other cars, right, no matter how good the car is, right, for ICE car, okay, they call it eternal combustion something, I forgot already. You have to ignite, spark off to have a combustion for the burst of speed. We don't have that lag. It's just immediately when we press, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> That is one of the very fun thing about Tesla. It zips around like, 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 I don't know, like road, road runner. Me, 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 me. <laughs> so regenerative braking makes, makes it possible for you to not use brake at all. Just press accelerate and let go. What it does, right, is when you let go and it breaks, right, it charges the car with battery again. That's why it's called regenerative because it regenerates the battery back into the car. Generally, while you're driving, right, the screen you won't be touching too much of it. Right? All it does is show you like your blind spot cameras and the uh, map. It's a very, very big screen. It's very clear. Of course, you need to clean it every now and then because of fingerprints, but it's not too much of a problem. However, you may be asking, so if you are driving, you shouldn't be using the screen, how you change music and all that, then you use the voice control. And the voice control is pretty sick because you can speak it whatever language you want. You want English, Chinese, Japanese, Cantonese, everything. Of course, there's also two buttons on the steering wheel where you can navigate if you choose to. La. A lot of people might think that it's very dangerous to fiddle with the screen while you're driving, but there's really no need. Alternatively, of course, you can auto drive then you fiddle with the screen. La. Because the aircon is not visible at all, it is admittedly right, not the strongest aircon I have experienced. La. However, it's enough, it's sufficient, okay? One of the more unique features about the aircon right, is that it is able to be independently controlled. Which means to say, I can make myself very cold, the passenger can make it very hot, and then we can even split the aircon. I have never used the split aircon before because I, I don't get it. I guess if you don't want direct wind in your face and you want the cold ambience, then you use that lot. The next feature I want to talk about, of course, is the soundproofing. The car itself is very quiet because it's an electric car, there's no or whatever the engine sound is. It is relatively quiet for the outsider. But as for, can you hear outside sound? Yes, you can. It's not too much of a problem to me because I often I just listen to music. Ma. The quality of the music and like when you're watching videos on Netflix inside the car is admittedly above average. You will feel especially immersive when you watch Netflix because it's like surround. You can hear the sound coming from all directions. Of course, if you are an uh, audio head, then you can do some modification to improve the audio further. I'm not an audio file, so it's enough for me. For those people with multiple drivers at home, right, you will appreciate this feature. Lah. This car remembers right, who is driving. If I sit here, they will know it's me. But if Preston sits here, they will know it's him. Or Shelly sits here, they will know it's her. When they know it's you, right, they will shift your whole seat, right? according to your preference and profile and even tilt the mirrors to according to what you want and we have tried this so many times before right like he sit or i sit they can recognize normally when i go overseas i will borrow my car to preston it's all his profile his spotify his preference so when he pick me up from airport i will send him home ah. so when i send him home and i take over the seat they will just change everything back for me Seamlessly, it's so seamless that you often forget about it. But I really think that they really thought of everything when they did this car. It's really, really cool. Legend has it, right? That Volvo is the safest car makers out there. If I'm not wrong, right? Tesla is now the safest car maker in the world. I don't emphasize too much about safety because I am a rather safe driver, says the guy that is not holding the steering wheel. But I will say that for most parts, right, this car is so safe, right, it reached to a point that it's paranoid already. There was a time where I was auto driving, right, and there was a car that I think lose control and almost hit me from the back. This car detected it and steer it before I could even react because I was panicking. So it started making a lot of beeping sound, ultra sonic, it detect the car is suddenly rushing and the car just auto steer itself. Even if I want to get into an accident in this car purposely, I think it's going to be quite a challenge. I would say this is the safest car I have ever drove. I feel very safe here. They have 
masterfully take care and improve all the basic functions to a point that you are able to have fun with a lot of other features as you can see this whole section i did not even <laughs> drive the car <laughs> it's just driving itself i i really i can i have to emphasize this auto driving again and again because it's so bloody cool regarding the charging right i don't have a home charger but i have never felt like i needed one at home this is because right, tesla can use all sorts of charger not only tesla charger okay a lot of places that i go have chargers whether tesla or not is not important charging wise there's two different types one is called ac one is called dc dc is extremely fast within 20 30 minutes you are fully charged but i heard it will hurt your battery ac charging is very slow but it doesn't hurt your battery i'm heading to a car park now that says full it's full ah but look at the Tesla charging port so I can park here, go have lunch while I charge and that is always very magical this feeling because I like to see where everybody have no parking lot and then they are suffering and I get to charge my car while I go eat and shop I will demonstrate to you how I charge with the AC charger first if you are using the other brands one right you need to sign up the car lock in all that uh, all, all, all that crap uh, it's a bit uh, troublesome and I forgot my password so <laughs> So when you're at the charging dock right, you just take out the charger and then you plug it in It will show the colour here Okay, after that You go to the app and you say Charge Yes And then you will start Basically start charging the car Then you just walk away and do whatever you want And then this will tell you at what percentage it is at And after you're done they will just auto charge it to your Apple card or whatever card that you register in your account so it's very convenient you don't even need to talk to anybody you just come back, take out and go off so the other things you can do while charging if you choose not to go out of the car or go eat or go shopping is that you can actually like watch Netflix in the car it, because the screen is so big it is uh, quite a viewing experience la. and this will be the sound this is a world like no other. One brimming with mystery and teeming with danger. Personally, I don't play any game, but you can also play game. They have games like Vampire Survivors. They have Fallout Shelter. They have Cuphead. You can even connect a Bluetooth controller to play. It's pretty cool. Uh. If we go pick Sherilyn, me and Preston will play chess. Of course, there's also other features uh, inside the car like the romance mode or sketch pad. You want to draw something or you even want to make music track of your own. You can legit do it. I don't know why would anybody do this wow <laughs> in a car but you can if you choose to so to stop charging all I need to do is just unlock the charge port when it's unlocked you just plug it out and put it back then you just drive away as simple as that so easy yeah that's it Okay, so now the battery is sufficiently warm up already. We are approaching the supercharger. We're gonna show you how fast it charges. Oh, there's one person charging right there. The Tesla community is so close knitted, right? That we will know who, who whosoever car is charging right now. As you can see, right, uh, you can show the percentage or the number of kilometers left in your car. Okay, so supercharging is not only faster and more efficient, you don't even need to turn on the app. You just go down, plug it in, and you walk away. So I'm going to demonstrate just that. Hey, so I will just walk to the charger. I press this button. This thing will open. And then I just plug it in. I'm done. Finish. I can walk away already. Since we are charging, I want to talk about the modifications and accessories that I did to the car. The first one I want to talk about is the sexy button. So sexy button, right? One cool thing, right, is you can program all these buttons uh, to do whatever you want. You can have it play music, activate voice command, open the glove box. I also can change my acceleration from the chill mode to the sports mode. The app has a lot of uh, other features that they will add in every now and then. And not only that, they even give you a diagnostic of your car right, and say your battery degradation is how much. You get to have a lot of other details purely from these sexy buttons. Some of the accessories I did, a lot of it is from this company called Halo Black. H-A-L-O-B-L-K. They gave me a mini dustbin, which is useful. 
Halo Black also have a very easy to install spoiler. They give me this sunshade. The heat on top is incinerating, I tell you. But of course, with the sunshade, it's a lot better. One of the modifications I did is a power front. By default, the front is a manual control. You have to open yourself and close yourself. But now, my front basically is auto. And of course, it can auto close. So you do it, you will close by yourself. Another modification I did was the self popping door handle. So the default way is you put your thumb in the fat part of the door handle and then you just pull. Very simple. The new way is just press this uh, door handle and then you can pull. And not only that, it comes in uh, LED light. It's just a lot easier to use. Like. So as you can see, the supercharger is actually very fast. Whatever they say, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes is actually not accurate. In the app, right, you can actually see how much is the charge and it's uh, updated life about 5 minutes before it's fully charged right they will come and remind you please walk back to your car and take it out of the charging station because if it hits 100% and you're still there right they will start to charge idling fee and that costs like $1 per minute but according to Zermatt there was one time he really overshot and he overshot by a lot the first time they actually give you a chance I haven't overcharged the car so I don't know whether it is true but Zermatt told me lah so I trust Zermatt lah so we are at 97% charging now. We can pretty much stop already. Lah. Usually, I don't wait more than 30 minutes to charge. Lah. And you don't have to wait until the battery is depleted that you come and charge. Neither do you have to wait until it fully 100% charge. It's really up to you how much time you want to spend charging. So to unplug the charger, is very simple. You just press the button. And then when it turns white, you just plug up. Then you will close by itself and then you just drive out. That's simple. You don't need to go to the end. You don't need to pay. You don't need to do anything. You just go. One of the things that I don't like is uh, this space on top. So now I have a sunshade, but we are the sunshade. Aesthetically, it looks nice because the light comes in, but it is really just insanely hot, especially in Singapore. I highly recommend anybody that get a Tesla ride, right? you really need to get a sunshade. I think this probably will be the worst con of a Tesla. It's the turning radius. Comparing to my previous car, which is a Range Rover, the turning radius is wonderful, okay? I can keep it within one lane and then you turn to another one the, the, the same lane but it will not be possible for Tesla because the turning radius is like a garbage truck you literally need like I don't know three lanes four lanes and then sometimes you still need to reverse in the middle of the road you need to account for that when you do a U-turn with a Tesla basically the turning radius is crap this is the part that I struggled the most when I ordered the car I didn't want white seat however Zermatt changed my mind when I met Zermatt I asked him the same question everybody asks me now. You choose white leather seats, you're not scared. The team, he told me that he wants spilled coffee and the stain wasn't there because our leather seat is a uh, hydrophonic or something like that. Phobic. Ah, hydrophobic. Yeah, so it is water repellent. I seen tests, they throw red wine, they throw mud, water, soft drink, sugar, Coca Cola, anything you can think of, and it doesn't stay on there. But the smell will stay. So you have to be careful when you go test, uh, you don't go any other throw coffee and all that. Another con, right? This one might be important to Lu Tzu people like me, right? Is the inbuilt GPS. Comparing to what I always use, which is Waze on my phone. The problem of it, right, is that it often brought you to the least efficient route. For a start, right, if you are completely relying on uh, your GPS to go a brand new place, right, it might not be the best of idea. Lah. to let you all know that there's a $45,000 grant to buy electric vehicle okay and that includes Tesla some cars is a 20k grant but Tesla is 45k grant that should be one of your consideration if you are thinking to buy Tesla by the end of this year because next year no more grant before I end the video I would like to thank all the sponsors that have made all this possible Vinyl Clinic for the PPF wrap and the solar firm Enhanced Auto Asia for the sexy buttons and all the little gadgets in the car Want to buy .sg for the auto front and the auto popping door handles and of course Halo Black for the sunroof cover the little accessories and of course the carbon fiber spoiler
In the description box below, I put a lot of codes, discount, promo, so be sure to check them out if you are planning to buy a Tesla. And I also got a referral code for you to buy a Tesla to enjoy some benefits and discount. These benefits and discount changes with time, so I don't know by the time this video come out what it is, but there's definitely something for you to gain. So as always, remember to follow all our socials. Click here for more. Click here to what? Cut to the bloopers. So I can win one Tesla. Are you, you giving no, away? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving away. I, I give the toy one. Uh. Huh? I give you a toy, Anna. Hola. <laughs>